improvement pill here. Welcome to lesson four of the Tamed course. In the previous lessons, we covered the strategy for this course, how habits work, and debunked some of the biggest misconceptions regarding habits. So if you have not watched the previous lessons, pause this video right now and click on the link in the description below. Because remember, in order for you to get the most out of this course, in order for you to really learn how to change your habits and change your life, you're going to have to watch each and every single one of the videos. In today's video, we're going to talk about some of the best habits to adopt so that you can pick one for yourself to focus on for the rest of the course. But before we get into the different habits that you should consider, let me tell you a short story. So Tom was your average guy. He was in his late 20s. He had a decent paying job. He wasn't very fit, but at the same time, he wasn't overweight. He did okay in life. But like most people, he had somewhat of an addiction. His choice of poison was smoking. He would smoke four or five cigarettes a day, which isn't too bad, but he knew it was a problem. So eventually, Eventually, Tom meets a girl. Her name is Janice, and they really hit it off. But Janice was really, really against smoking and wanted Tommy to quit. Tom was in love and he knew that she was right, so he decided to give it his all and quit for good. The quitting process wasn't too bad for Tom, it took him a while, but after a year, he was able to quit smoking for good. But that wasn't the only thing that changed about Tom. He started going to the gym, he managed to lose some weight and put on some muscle. He also started reading a bit more. His relationship with his co-workers and boss improved and he got a promotion for the first time in 5 years. Stories like this are very common. Researchers have observed time and time again that when someone overcomes a bad habit or starts forming a new one, a whole slew of other good habits come with it. They name this sort of habit a keystone habit, a single habit that causes you to adopt multiple other good habits and change your life. The reason I'm telling you this story is because today you're going to pick a habit to focus on for the rest of this course. And the three habits that I'm going to show you are three of the most powerful keystone habits out there. These habits have the highest chance of drastically changing your life. So without further ado, here are the three most effective keystone habits. The first one is reading. Most of you guys probably know by now that I'm a huge fan of reading. When I first started my self-development journey, this was the first habit that I started implementing into my life. I would read just about every single day on my commute to work. And because of this, I would finish a book a week. Now, everyone knows that education is important. That's why we spend 12 to 18 years in buildings that are designed to teach us things. However, the problem lies in the fact that most of the stuff we learn in school isn't that useful in real life. When was the last time you had to use your history knowledge or your knowledge of calculus? These things are nice to know and have their uses, but aren't that practical in our day-to-day -day lives. Instead, we need to be learning about things like social skills, maintaining a proper diet, how to exercise, money management, things that we don't really learn correctly in school. Books provide you with knowledge on all of these topics. They also give you different perspectives on things that we assume to be true. For example, most people assume they should always buy a car, but if you read books on investing or money management, you'll often come across the idea that, hey, it's actually better to lease a car, and this is actually true. Literally all of the car salesmen that I personally know lease their cars, they don't buy them. And by reading, you'll often find that you'll start adjusting other areas of your life. If you're reading a book on body language, you'll start becoming more conscious of your own body language as well as those around you. If you read a book on money management, you'll start noticing a change in your spending habits. And because of its ability to influence any part of your life in a positive way, reading is without a doubt one of the most powerful keystone habits out there. The next keystone habit is meditation. I have tons of videos on meditation and you guys probably know by now that I'm a huge advocate for it. The reason meditation is so powerful is because of what it does to your brain. It trains a part of your brain that's responsible for willpower, for self-control. And just like going to the gym, if you train it, it actually gets stronger. And this gives you the ability to do certain things, things that I consider to be superpowers. For example, you'll find yourself more in control of your emotions. And this is great because oftentimes we relapse or give in to our addictions when our emotions are all over the place. Another thing meditation trains you to do is focus longer. Meditation is simply the act of trying to focus your mind on one thing. And this is extremely hard for people nowadays. When you start meditating and making it into a habit, you'll notice a drastic increase in your ability to focus. Maybe in the past, you were the type of person who couldn't even read two pages of a book without getting sidetracked. A lot of people report increased focus, being able to read entire chapters at a time 
time after making meditation into a habit. And the last superpower that meditation provides is a sense of general well-being. Do you remember that sort of awe and joy you had as a kid where the little things in life would excite you? Meditation brings back that sort of mindset, that sort of perspective, where you can sit down on a park bench and simply be mind blown by just how beautiful everything around you is. Meditation is an extremely powerful keystone habit because it in itself is a very, very hard habit to stick to. But if you can make it into a habit that you do automatically every day, that means your levels of willpower have skyrocketed dramatically and adopting other habits will become a piece of cake. The third and final keystone habit that we're going to speak about today is fitness. And this includes everything ranging from running to lifting heavy weights to doing calisthenics. Fitness is an extremely powerful keystone habit because of its intimate relationship with diet. Researchers have found that most people who start sticking to a fitness regimen will often find themselves adjusting their diet as well, even if they're told not to. It makes sense because if you're working your ass off at the gym, you're less likely to consume junk food right after because it quote unquote undoes all of your hard work. And because these two habits basically come in a package together, it requires a lot of willpower to maintain. So if you can successfully make them into full-fledged habits, you'll be able to take on smaller habits with ease. For those of you that are curious as to how willpower works, we're going to cover all of that later on in the course, but for now, just understand that it does work like a muscle. The more you test it, the stronger it becomes. On top of that, the habit of fitness and diet has a huge influence on how you feel every single day. Many people report feeling tired or foggy, and oftentimes the problem stems from our diet or our lack of exercise. Once these people start adopting these two good habits, they often report feeling much better. And if you start feeling better on a day to day basis, it makes it much easier to start adopting other good habits. This ability to improve your body's day to day function makes fitness and diet an extremely powerful keystone habit. So again, here are the three keystone habits that we just talked about reading, meditation, fitness and diet. Now I know I know there's dozens of other good habits out there like cold showers, morning rituals, making your bed, etc. But these three keystone habits are without a doubt three of the most powerful habits that you can add to your life. So what I like for you to do right now is to think carefully about which habit you want to work on for the rest of this course. Which of these habits are you going to commit to to try to stick to until it reaches that line of automaticity that we talked about where you no longer even have to think about doing it. That's the goal. It's also very important to note that you should only try to stick to one of these habits at a time. We humans are extremely bad at multitasking, although we tend to think that we're pretty good. I can just about guarantee that if you're trying to adopt multiple habits at once, that you're going to get overwhelmed and fail. Stick to the single keystone habit you decide on until it reaches that line of automaticity. Do not, I repeat, do not try to adopt any other good habits until that keystone habit you picked is completely embedded in your life. So what I'd like for you to do right now is to think hard about which of these three habits you're going to stick to for the rest of this course. Make your decision and let me know what you picked in the comments below. Next week, we're going to start talking about how you can start forming this habit, how to strategically pick a cue that will increase your chances of sticking to this habit, how to get closer to the line of automaticity without working your ass off and much much more. This episode was brought to you with the help of the patrons of this channel. If you're someone who has found value in this course or would like to help me continue to make these videos for free, please visit my Patreon page for more information on the perks and benefits that all my patrons receive.